Welcome to Mutual Fund Cafe. Indians have started investing in equities and in mutual funds yet again after what a three or four year hiatus. So much so that even when foreign investors pulled out over a billion dollars in the past few weeks, domestic funds have stepped in rather easily to support the market. But this is not just a market level issue. It is important for the country that mutual funds are once again emerging as a favored asset class, as a favored investment instrument. Today I have with me four of the foremost fund managers who collectively manage uh, between them about $25 billion or 1.5 lakh crores of funds. I have with me Prashant Jain, the CIO of HDFC Mutual Fund, S. Narain, the CIO of ICI Separential Mutual Fund, Mahesh Patel, the uh, co-CIO at uh, Birla Mutual Fund and Harsha Upadhyay, the CIO at Kotak Mutual Fund. The best and the brightest in the industry are with me. So expect a fund of uh, uh, wisdom and information from them. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Well, uh, let me start with you, Prashanta. You know, uh, like we have uh, uh, introduced this topic, uh, about 50, 60,000 crores have flowed into the industry over the past uh, one year or so. After a degrowth, after an outflow for the past uh, several years. Now, you know, uh, I will revisit the topic of uh, importance of uh, mutual funds. But first up, uh, uh, what confidence can investors have that they will not see too much losses? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, do you think that this market is likely to give serious losses in the immediate term? Or do you think, uh, uh, well, maybe some losses? What kind of uh, losses should markets, uh, investors be prepared for? So I think equities are a volatile asset class in the short run and it does not make sense to focus too much on the short run. And in fact, short term focus takes people away from long term substantial uh, profits. And I think PE multiples are a fairly reliable indicator of how markets be, tend to behave in the future over one, two, three year periods. If you look at the current PE multiples, despite markets trading at 28,000, PEs are not expensive and that is because over the last seven years, I mean, from pre Lehman, from Jan 08, markets are up only 30 percent. Okay. But the nominal GDP in rupee terms is up more than 100 percent. So, P markets have basically played a catch up in the last one, one and a half years. I would say they are quite reasonably valued. Interest rates are sitting at near peak, they should move lower. Economic growth, we believe, I believe, should improve. I think equities are a good, promising asset class with a one, two, three year view, but I would not urge people to invest in equities with a very short term. No, I, I take your point on that. In fact, if uh, in that downturn people had continued to work with their SIPs, uh, there would have been less regret now and perhaps more money that they would be... I, ta I take that point. But nevertheless, for that 60,000 crore uh, owners who came into the system in the past one year, uh, there is still a bit of trepidation on whether they would be sitting in near-term losses. Just for uh, the purpose of my headline, if you please, do you think the Nifty can go much lower at, from current levels or do you think uh, uh, it's kind of reflecting uh, economic fundamentals now? So I would first say short term is genuinely uncertain in equities yes. and most of us, whenever we have tried to guess the markets, more often we have been wrong. Having said that, I feel the way economy is moving, the way things are looking out. And I think over six months, one year period, to my mind, the downside is quite limited, in my opinion. Okay. You would concur with him, uh, Narain? Clearly, one is looking at India. From an India point of view, you have uh, much lower fiscal deficit, much lower current account deficit, much mm. lower inflation, yes. now lower interest rates. Mm. So I think from an India perspective, so what we have seen from our past experience is if there is a big bubble in some other part of the world and that bubble deflates, no. then it can have an impact. So the way the Chinese market has been going up, if the Chinese market goes up another 50%, then what happens is, uh, you know, Chinese valuations will become very high. Mm. And as it is, I can show you, the, I get mails showing a lot of stocks trading at 100, 100 200 PE in China. So I would say the risk of a serious correction may not be from an internal reason. It could be from a reason that China goes up another 50% and then corrects 50%. Then we will always have some collateral impact. Mm. I think that's why we believe that investors have to invest for the long term. Mm -hmm. and choose to invest defensively. I think if they do the and they follow asset allocation, I think then market volatility is a benefit to them. Okay. It is not a problem. 
Uh, no, I, I, I take your point that, uh, you know, we should be looking at the longer term. But nevertheless, the trepidation is still there. You know, we've lost 11% uh, from re uh, recent highs. And therefore, there is uh, uh, just a, a niggling worry whether in the near term things can get uh, a little out of hand. Is, is that something that uh, you, you suspect? I mean, is, 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 are we looking at 7,000? Are we looking at 7,500? Is it, uh, uh, you know, a manageable kind of uh, fall that we will see? See, I think first, now, if you look at it now, investors are very fond of pure small cap funds, small and mid cap funds and funds which have very big investment in small and mid caps. So today, if you look at the large caps, they are reasonably valued. And uh, even the quality large caps, which we used to be very negative on, and some of them in the pharma and consumer space, some of them have corrected pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So I would say that if investors are genuinely worried about downside, mm -hmm. they should choose uh, either Stay balanced fund. kind of funds or choose large cap funds, and not choose funds mm -hmm. which can go substantially into mid and small cap, because in mid and small cap, some of the stocks are trading at 40, 50 PE. Mm -hmm. So they can correct, whereas if you don't look, it doesn't look at this point of time that large cap is expensive. Fair point. Prashant spoke about reasonable valuations uh, uh, once again emerging. Let me take that point forward, Mahesh. What is your sense in terms of actually when the earnings cycle turns? We've been waiting, you know, every year or at least for the last couple of years, we begin with a, a double-digit uh, uh, earnings uh, growth expectation and then with each passing quarter it whittles down to sometimes low single digits as we saw in the fourth quarter. What kind of an earnings growth should we prepare, be prepared for in uh, 516? Yeah, I mean, you, you're true with that, very true that in the last uh, few years, we have seen that actual earnings have been lower than expectations. In fact, if you look at the CAGR and earnings in the last five years, it's uh, probably around 8% or so, oh. which is below the long-term trend average. So if you look at long-term 10-year uh, average or a 15-year average, would be around 13% earnings CAGR, which is broadly uh, been in line with the nominal GDP or slightly uh, better oh. than that. And, and, and the reason why we have seen uh, downgrade in recent past is because the revival in the economy which we have been expecting has been elusive. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that comes in, and uh, we believe that this year uh, you would see economy expanding, if not by at least 50 basis point or so. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that are multifold. Okay, one is that government expenditure, okay, which has been contracting in the last few years because of the fiscal deficit. I think this, this time there is a, enough room for the government to spend. And we've seen the yeah. first month numbers, April numbers have shown an increase. So if that trend continues, I think that could give a flip to the economy. So obviously if GDP grows higher, okay, you will see corporate uh, top line moving uh, uh, faster. Mm. And uh, to some extent, uh, operating leverage, uh, we have seen that coming into play. A lot of companies in the downturn have been able to actually tighten the operations, both on the working capital side and the cost side. That benefits start to come in as you see uh, growth starts to pick up. Okay. And uh, we believe that this year uh, growth of around uh, 15 to 20 percent is uh, quite possible. 18 to 20? 15 to 20 percent okay. in that range. Mm -hmm. Because last year, I think there were a lot of couple of one-offs which were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the reason why the earnings were such a disaster than compared to the expectations. Let be it cross-currency impact, be it mm -hmm. uh, commodity prices which fell sharply, which led to some inventory losses. Uh, we saw some uh, extra stress on the banking sector, especially the PSU banks. Those might not uh, reoccur this year. Okay. So I think it's reasonable to expect that uh, uh, with some pickup in the economy and uh, with uh, kind of earnings, uh, a bit the margins where they are, mm. and also the commodity prices which have fallen, the full mm. benefit has not really flowed in. It might come in in this quarter. I think uh, it's reasonable to expect 15% uh, mm. or above growth mm. in this uh, fiscal year. You agree, Harsha? I would say that uh, probably the earnings growth momentum will pick up maybe uh, towards the end of this financial year rather than immediately. Mm. I think uh, even this particular quarter we are not seeing a great change in uh, fundamentals for many of the corporates. But I guess uh, as, as um, Mahesh mentioned, uh, the commodity prices which actually uh, took away some of the profits of Indian corporates will start acting as a positive uh, trigger. Mm. Uh, they will start aiding margins going forward. And we have also started seeing some amount of pickup in terms of uh, government spend. Mm. And then when there is some amount of volume growth, uh, I think the operating leverage will kick in mm. and you will start seeing better numbers. Uh, but our guess is probably it's going to be a little back-ended than immediately. It's not going to be uh, evenly uh, 
uh, evenly moving up in terms of earnings growth. Mm. But I guess uh, second half and probably FS17, mm. wherein you will also have the benefit of uh, some amount of deleveraging and some amount of lower interest burden mm. uh, will be the uh, years and quarters to look for. All right, gentlemen, hold on to that thought. Uh, we have a lot more questions uh, for our mutual fund experts. We are back after a very short break. Stay right there.